to be successful at something, you have to get really good at it. And to get really good at it, you have to like work at it in a very deliberate way that will not be necessarily enjoyable. Like in the same way that like, um, you know, learning to understand computer science involves a lot of like staring at equations and like difficult thinking that is not like fun. Like I think screenwriting is, can be the same in that like, it is also a lot of hours, especially when you're starting of like, going down paths that, you know, are, are that, that aren't fruitful or like you work really hard and then you come out with a 90 page script that's actually not very good. All right, welcome back to The Work, our ongoing uh, series of discussions surrounding uh, filmmaking in the Chicago filmmaking community. My name is Bradley Powell, I'm a writer director and I am here with... Uh, <clears throat> hello everyone, my name is uh, Robert Bruce Carter. And, uh, Robert is joining us, and uh, thank you very much for, uh, for joining us uh, this session. So um, we wanted to kind of center today's dialogue around the broad concept of filmmaking challenges. Um, we all have uh, experienced numerous challenges, especially on the kind of indie level uh, that you know, the majority of the people uh, who we've reached out to work on. Um, and that's everything from uh, the challenges of uh, kind of, you know, defining your own personal vision, carrying that out, all of the, uh, the doubt and indecision that comes with that at times. Um, obviously there's uh, questions surrounding um, success, success versus failures and how we define that for ourselves. Um, and, you know, the ever-present conversation of rejection, which seems to <laughs> always hover around anything that an independent filmmaker does. Very fresh in my mind this week. So, yeah. So. <laughs> a lot of festival rejections, like, yes, like, literally yesterday and today. So. <laughs> okay, well, do you want to start there? Like, <laughs> what, what was it that happened and what, and, uh, and I guess talk a little bit about how you felt about it. Um, yeah, so I guess there's like, uh, so uh, like I made a feature film that it premiered at a festival in March and uh, it did, uh, so it has played in one festival, but we probably applied to like 30 or so. Sure. And I think our hit rate, I mean, we've, we've been accepted to three, I think out of like maybe 25 that have gotten back to us so far. Um, Say that. And there's like a lot of festivals clustered around. Yeah, say that again because I think you broke up a bit. So oh, you're, sorry. when you're talking about the hit rate. Yeah. So we, we got we've gone into three out of about twenty-five so far. I think there's like maybe four or five that we're still waiting to hear back from. Um and like I guess because there's a lot of festivals in October and November, the for whatever reason, like the last two weeks have just like had a lot of these rejection notices going out. And um it's like it's so um uh, hurtful to get them. <laughs> it's just we should say though that three out of twenty-five, while mathematically <laughs> a horrible percentage on on some, yeah, you know, sort of, is an actually a really good film festival rate in a sense. You know, like, or I mean, what's your feeling on that? I mean, yeah, I think I that's what makes. I, I think that's what makes this kind of thing challenging. Is like because you feel bad complaining about your like 5% success rate yeah. because other people have a 3% or, or a zero with some films, not as people, obviously. Uh, and I've, I've also been there with, with short films. So it's like, I, it's kind of like, um, uh, like, I don't know, people tell me like, don't take it personally or whatever. And I kind of, I don't feel ever like catch train too, where, uh, uh, Yosarian's like upset main character that like everyone's shooting at him right. and his friend's like yeah but they're shooting at everyone don't take it personally and he's like right, but exactly. they're shooting at me like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like uh, there's people out there trying to kill me and I feel that way a little bit where it's like yeah but they're like trying to like ruin my, my film and like everybody um, has 5% chance yeah exactly <laughs> uh, yeah. so I, I don't know I'm starting to come around this feeling of like maybe Maybe film festivals are like this, uh, I don't know, collective uh, farce that we've all like decided to participate in 
and uh, maybe we yeah. <laughs> need to start looking at other things because well we should definitely come back to that uh, okay to that, <laughs> that topic of conversation because that could open up uh, a, a big uh, conversational uh, digression so like maybe more basically um, because I think that you know you articulated articulated yourself well in terms of talking about the feeling of rejection um, and and nobody likes to experience that but yeah. in terms of uh, where rejection comes from, I find it oftentimes uh, that it's coming from, uh, it, it, it stems back directly to your own personal desire and in how you've self-defined success. So I know for, for myself, I've, I mean, honestly, my, my, my broad definition of success as it applies to filmmaking is really if I can just continue filmmaking. Right. Now, th that's maybe perhaps too broad uh, for the purposes of of this conversation. But like, I will say that at the end of the day, I do go back to that as a as a um, person who, you know, I, I probably dabble in what is I don't. I think I'm already playing in waters that aren't likely to be. Uh, either uh, financially <laughs> rewarding um, or um, widely seen. Right. Um, and so really, and it's not that I wouldn't like to be more financially, let me be clear, I'd love to be more financially rewarded and more widely right. seen, and I'm trying all the time. But there's certain waters that you, like, you know, you can pick your pools. And I think a lot of the uh the pools that uh, myself and the filmmakers that I know have chosen to swim in, there's just certain limitations to to those realities. And so the, the, the best thing you can say is like, am I able to, at the end of the day, make the film that is both personal to uh, myself uh, and, and my artistic vision? And, am I can, and, and is the last film that I made uh, enabling me to make another film? Is it, right. is it is it at all helping me make another and better and bigger and more widely seen film? Right. Um, and if it's doing that, I think that is success for me. But how would you define success? I guess. Yeah, I think I think we're actually like pretty close there. Uh, I I would I would sort of say like um, I think about it like like one is this sustain stay in the game, be able to keep making films. And I actually don't think festivals really um, contribute to that apart yeah. unless maybe you're talking about like a tip or something. Uh, right. And so that, that's like definitely a goal I have is like to just be able to keep doing this. Uh, and then the other goal I think, which is like maybe more tied to like artistic goals is like, you know, you create something that's whatever, a piece of entertainment or art and like part of that is like it's not real or experienced or it's not real or finished until it is like experienced by people and i think that's why it's like weird like getting rejected from a festival it, it does not hurt my like income as a filmmaker and i mean using the word income like sort of loosely there but like yeah uh because i know that you know it's not it's not going to lead to like a bucket of money or any money really but it is like somebody Usually losing money yeah, I mean, frankly, I pay, you know, it's like you pay to submit and yeah. then you pay to fly there and then you, yeah. whatever. So <laughs> that, that's like a whole other thing. And that's part of the collective parts that I've been thinking about. But, but, but it, it, I, I think it's hurtful because somebody's saying like, you know, oh, I've decided that, um, you know, we watched it and, and we're not going to share it with our audience, basically. And so you're not going to get that artistic satisfaction. Um, and, and I think that that's what's hard and especially when you're in the indie world because like it's not like i can just say oh i'll turn you know, i'll give it to netflix or whatever um, like a lot of times festivals are the sort of way that you get people to see it um, absolutely so I, I think my success is like yeah a it would be like to make money or at least backup plan is like be sustainable but then also like i want to make stuff that like i do comedy mostly so i want to make people laugh in a thoughtful way and like hopefully you know change the way they think about things like all that stuff that comes with art and like trying to you know play like a very small role uh in, in our culture you know 
yeah. engaging, engaging people. people. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if you found this, but like on my most recent, like on the feature film, like mm -hmm. there was a, th it was a th feeling I had never felt before, which was like, I felt proud, proud of the, like proud of the film in a way I haven't, yes. where I was like, like, I, 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 I was like, I made the thing that I wanted to make. And like, yes. it most, like, it's not perfect. Like you said, well, like well said, yeah. It like, didn't, it's not like the best possible version of it, like what it could be, you know, if you had more money or whatever, blah, blah, blah. And some, some shots and scenes or whatever, like a little off, but like, right. like fundamentally I like aimed for something and I hit it. And like intrinsically that like feels very good. So I do find that now when I get these re festival rejections or something, or people don't re react to it the way I want, it, I'm like a, I, I don't know, I'm a little bit impervious to it, I guess. And yeah. I, it, it's like a feeling of like a job well done that's sort of intrinsic. And I, I, it's sort of an alien feeling to me in my life. So I don't know where that comes from, but <laughs> like, um, I don't have you Have you experienced that at all or? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not as far along in my journey as you are. I haven't had as much like stuff finished and out there in the world and, and okay. live in the process. So this is gonna be a journey uh, and, and the next iteration when I, you know, finish uh, my, my current project. But I think what you're saying, I really like in terms of, did you do the thing that you set out to do? Right. And I think that can really help when it comes to something like a festival where like, it's one thing for them to reject the film that you didn't intend to do. <laughs> like, and it's another thing for them to reject the film that you did intend to do. So that cuts both ways. Obviously, uh, when somebody's rejecting the thing that you did intend to do, it can be more personal, it can be more hurtful, but on the same, uh, you know, the same token, like it's at least rejecting you for seeing the thing that you wanted them to see, which I have to think is a much better feeling than if we're gonna, if you have to pick between two rejections, having yeah. them reject the thing and then having, and then you be left with the feeling, well, well, you know, they're rejecting this thing that I wasn't even trying to do. And that, you know, like it's right. way over, it's like a 180 from where I, where I actually uh, wanted them to be. Mm -hmm. And so you're not, you're not only like mis, you've not only misrepresented yourself on some level, but mm -hmm. you've also not gotten any gain for it. And I feel like that would be much more devastating than to have somebody go, Bradley, you did, you made this, you know, perfect Bradley film, and we're uh -huh. not going to put it in this, this festival because we don't like Bradley films. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. you did a great job at doing a Bradley film. I think that would be um, a much better feeling than having them be like, oh, you did this other thing that's... Right. I don't think inauthentic is the right word, but like, that's not you and that's yeah. not, it's something else and we're rejecting you for it. And yeah, and I, I think even like if you, if I, I mean, like, I know there's certain ways, like I could write a film that would uh, be commercially successful and get into a lot of festivals or whatever. Like if, uh, you know, I, I could probably make a, like a, a very heavily Christian themed film right now. Mm -hmm. And it would probably like make a lot of money or something, but it just like, wouldn't like, I think if, if, if the internal stuff isn't there for me, at least as an artist, like the external stuff doesn't like, doesn't really matter, I guess. Right. Um, so if I could like trick festivals into like, you know, liking something that's like sort of meaningless to me, like, I don't think, I don't know. I just like wouldn't enjoy that either. Um, it's too much work to do for something that you don't actually believe in. Yeah, totally. <laughs> totally. Like, when it comes down to it, it's just like there's other aspects of life where maybe putting to putting forward something that is less representative of who you are to your core might be either beneficial, fruitful, or advisable, mm -hmm. or at least not a bad thing. Um, but when it comes to art and you're giving so much of yourself, your time and your attention, your blood, your sweat, your tears, et cetera, et cetera, to something, yeah. and then for you to then misrepresent yourself, it seems like uh, kind of a waste of time. I, 
I agree. It feels a uh, feels kind of like an empty empty pursuit. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Um, so have you had uh, challenges from the like the standpoint of you know either that are like writing specific mm-hmm. or uh, directing specific or editing specific, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Um, I mean all three and I can like go through each of them or, um, yeah, I, I guess I'll, I'll start with writing, I guess, and then we can go to maybe directing, but, um, uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, I think 12 years ago when I started writing sketches, they were bad and I, it was very hard to write them. And then, five or six years ago when I started writing screenplays. I mean, eventually I got pretty good at writing sketches. Um, It was like, I I think when you like first start learning to write screenplays, it's like, it feels like you're kind of like drinking from a fire hose because like there's all these books out there and all these things, like there's structure and there's dialogue and there's like pacing and there's 10, you know, and like the, all the things that like make it really, really hard to write a great movie because there's like so many moving pieces and, and none of them are mathematical. Um, Although some books would lead you to believe that they are. But. Yeah, some books will sell you the myth that that uh, it's, it's sort of paint by numbers. Um, and shockingly, paint by numbers does not lead to uh, compelling original work. Does not lead to the Mona Lisa. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Imagine. Yeah, it's a, a real head scratcher there. Um, so I, I think in my first challenge coming from, from sketch writing was like, in sketch writing, you get pretty good at writing scenes uh, mm-hmm. because that's basically the whole, the whole of a sketch is like a scene. Um, so the first challenge was really like, how do you like tie whole stories together and things like that. And that took me a lot of like false starts on screenplays where I would you know, I'd start writing and then realize like there's no story here or I'd just like, uh, like the first like screenplay I wrote that I think is like pretty decent it took me like I, I want to say like two years off and on and like I just like couldn't quite break the story and it just took like yeah. a lot of like sort of uh, like banging my head against the wall and like staring at the screen and like going down different paths and things like that. Um, I'm really glad I like stuck with that that kind of process um, mm-hmm. because I think I, I don't know. I, I just think it's like really hard um, to make a good movie where like the story mechanics like don't in some like I think in some way you have to compel people to keep watching or keep reading like and it was very hard to do at first uh, sure. and I couldn't even like keep myself interested in scripts. Before. That's often a sign. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's often a sign of the first thing that uh, I'm I'm want to cut is just like all right uh i've read this a couple of times and every time i'm falling asleep at some at some point i've probably cut this scene it's not working exactly yeah um yeah and then uh i don't know so i just sort of like picked up um what actually I, i did this thing like five years ago i read i read this book by a writer named cal newport and he's sort of like a I don't know, uh, productivity guy, I guess, but his whole thing is like, you know, basically to like get really good to, to have to be successful at something, you have to get really good at it and to get really good at it. You have to like work at it in a very deliberate way that will not be necessarily enjoyable. Like in the same way that like, um, you know, learning to understand computer science involves a lot of like staring at equations and like difficult thinking that is not like fun like I think screenwriting is can be the same in that like it is also a lot of hours especially when you're starting of like going down paths that you know are are, that that aren't fruitful or like trying to brainstorm things and then like you work really hard and then you come out with a 90 page script that's actually not very good and then when you're starting you mean there's a point where it's not like that oh my god (laughs) (laughs) I can't wait to get there I I mean, no, I mean, I, I think after, I mean, I've been basically writing for about an hour every day for the last yeah. like six years. And I feel like I'm, I'm finally at a point where like, I, I'm like, you know, like, pr- like decent at like, whatever, at doing whatever that is, you know, whatever it is. I'm like decent at it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, 
Um, no, I, but as, sorry, go ahead. No, no, you go ahead. Um, I was going to say, as, as, as a director, I, I had this like realization when um, earlier this year, I never knew what I was doing as a director, I realized. Um, <laughs> and, like, uh, I think because I come from sort of the acting world, like I've always been comfortable talking to actors and like that sort of side of it. But yeah. the whole like visual side and, and I mean, something I think you really, really excel at, honestly. Uh, I hope that's not excessive flattery there. I know it's the part of the ground rules or whatever, but um, I, I uh, you know, I realized like, I don't really know what to do. With, I didn't know what to do with a camera basically. Mm -hmm. um, and I uh, would just sort of like copy stuff from movies that I had seen or whatever, or, or just sort of do like the obvious thing. Um, and then I, I, I was in Barcelona over the winter and I, I met this, uh, made a friend there who, who was a director and, you know, he was talking about, it. he's like, oh, well, you know, the, you know, the, he said something like the, the director's job is to like, you know, tell the cinematographer, you know, where the focus of the scene should be basically. And then the cinematographer's job is to use the light and the camera and all that to like bring the focus to the right thing. And like, I don't know if that's like the way or what, you know, it's probably just one way of thinking it's about it. Way, yeah. It's a way of thinking of it, sure. Um, but it was like the first time I'd ever even just sort of had uh, like a solid way of thinking about it. Um, and I don't know, maybe people are listening and being like, this guy doesn't know what he's doing. Like he doesn't know where to put the camera. <laughs> but like, it's not like, it wasn't obvious to me, I guess. And nobody, I didn't go to film school. I don't even know that they even teach you that in film school. Um, so. Yeah, I mean, and talked about this in other conversations uh, in the series, but you know, the secret is like, nobody really knows what they're doing <laughs> or, right. or, how it, or how it will affect the final thing. But we all make us make assumptions um, and, and, and do the best that we can to, you know, at least make sure that all of those assumptions are pointed in the same direction as much as possible. I think when, when you get like cross purposes uh, assumptions, that's kind of where things tend to go awry, at least for, for me, unless they're deliberately, you're deliberately doing something like that. Uh, what you're talking about in terms of uh, writing and, and, and creating a um, artistic practice that, you know, every day you're, you're doing it for an hour. And so you can get better at just the craft of what it's like to sit down and face a blank page and hammer something out. Um, I think that that is a lot of people outside looking in sort of um, view of filmmaking is red carpets, glitz and glam. <laughs> but it all starts with yeah. you know Robert getting up every day and writing for an hour. And like you said, sometimes it's it's like looking at the equations and it not being the most fun thing. And oftentimes it yeah. is your head against uh against uh a wall um because it's not always uh present and there in every yeah. single moment um but uh i find some comfort in uh my uh, like the stick to itiveness to to just keep plugging away at it mm -hmm. um because at some point something will crack <laughs> um and yeah. that's yeah eventually it cracks um maybe it'll also, be myself but <laughs> something will crack. hopefully you don't crack before the uh, yeah. um part of that was also like i'm just i'm this is like all coming back to me but like uh i remember there was a point where i like looked at like all my scripts or whatever i'd written and been like i was like oh i'm like really bad at writing like relationships between people or something like believable relationships. Mm -hmm. And I spent like months um, on various things of like, all right, I'm just going to like write scenes or like, you know, shorts or something that are like about relationships or things like that to like sort of like hone in on those things or like, um, I think I, at one point I spent a month, like every day, I'm just going to like try and write physical comedy. Like, whatever Buster Keaton kind of like people yeah. stepping on hose or whatever and like getting whacked in the face, <laughs> like, like coming up with ideas like that. A 90 minute uh, film about like countless people stepping on rakes and shovels and 
everything left in their yard. Yeah, so basically like a, kind of like a Jerry <laughs> Lewis uh, movie. <laughs> I think it's his birthday tomorrow, but yeah. yeah may he rest in peace. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, uh, that's interesting because uh, I think there's two natural reactions that you can have to um, finding something that you yourself do not think is the quality that you want it to be. So in your case, you said relationships. I think there are those films and filmmakers that then say, okay, well then I'm going to make films that are specifically not about relationships. Right. You know, and that will be the workaround or the other solution. And this is like a broad spectrum. Obviously there's everything in between mm -hmm. is to, like you said, practice that and hope that you, you, you get better. Mm -hmm. Um, and so it's kind of, um, I will use the phrase kind of like, um, what you hang your hat on as right. a filmmaker. That's a, that's a definite decision in a, in a, um, uh, a strategy to employ perhaps you can you can focus on what you do the best which i think most of us do right. and you can limit uh what you do uh the worst is to the mm. degree that is possible and then you can try to as uh as as much as possible uh start doing those things that you don't do as as well as you would like better or, and oftentimes that is just a matter of, okay, well, I know that um, my like forte as a director is not uh, like the technical aspects of things. You could set a camera bef uh, before me and like, I might be able to turn it on. <laughs> um, yeah. And if I could turn it on, I can, I give myself a 50% chance of being able to turn it off. Um, but, but everything else, I could probably scroll through some menus and do some very basic things, but like, that's yeah. not my expertise. And that would apply to pretty much all the technical aspects of, of, of filmmaking, but that's mm -hmm. also where you can bring in a collaborator, uh, totally. who, whose specialty, uh, is strong where you are weaker. Um, so that's oftentimes my solution to that, um, you know, I, there's so much in the wide uh, world of film making that, um, you know, one could uh, fixate on, but it's very hard to be, and there are the filmmakers who are more j jacks of all, tr all, all trades, but it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's pretty challenging uh, and overwhelming to feel as though you have to uh, know every detail of every other aspect. Um, right. So, um yeah that's what i would kind of say to that i agree with that i totally agree with that yeah. i know how to turn a camera on but i don't i don't know how to light the scene or the white right. i don't know the white balance thing is the temperature i don't, I don't know it doesn't make any sense to me. What are these terms? <laughs> when you say you felt uh like it was an inadequate process dive into that more like what about well, it yeah i think that it was a process that was driven by the constraints of not, I mean, we basically finished casting 10 days before we went into production. So yeah, there's always that one role. Yeah, it's like with, with actor availability and the fact that like me and the producer were like basically working all day, every day to, to actually yeah. get the film going, you know, it's just like not, there just wasn't time to have a process where they sort of discover the character organically and then come together. And like, um, I think the way I tried to sort of take that failure and transcend it was like, okay, I think this movie is going to be a little weird. It's going to be about people being a little uncomfortable in the presence of other people. And I think I, it's not like I like, that was some like genius decision I made. It was like, that's what I mean, it was. <laughs> it was a wise decision though. Like you built it in, you built in the thing that was the limitation, right? Yeah, no, exactly. Yeah, I, I think you're right. Yeah, like like the movie, like I think when you make things that are a little, they're supposed to be awkward in tone and, and maybe even a little absurd or something, you can get away with a lot of stuff that, you know, you, like if you tried to make boyhood without 
you know, that way, <laughs> like, it just come off as like really flat and, uh, sure. uh, what, you know, whatever it would really, it would really show the weaknesses would really show. So I, I don't know. We, it was like kind of turned into a strength in a way. Yeah. Every film is going to be both the film and the process of making the film and the relationship between those two things. So you're, yeah. you're, you always have to kind of, there's the, you can either, uh, avoid the glaring issue or you can either try to work it in and in in, or in or improve upon it in some way and i I think that is the wise decision um but you have to first diagnose what that is and like you said earlier not be so um uh oblivious to things that you you can clearly see before you right Um, And I think that, you know, talking about uh, weaknesses that uh, we individually have as as filmmakers that we, you know, have to be cognizant of, I think one of my weaknesses is there is a certain amount of, um, there's a point where the, the luxury or the tendency to explore becomes too much. and I definitely have to guard against that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you have to be able to pull yourself back and say, all right, um, we've done enough here. You, this, yeah. The sweet spot is doing just enough where you've done it, but not so much where it becomes redundant or boring or exhausting because you will need that later on. You have to save something for, for later. Um, totally. And so the, I think, you know, that's, I think that's in writing. I'm finding that right now as I'm trying to finish um, a script and I'm, I'm kind of sitting there and um, starting to get a little um, annoyed with myself and um, uh, exhausted in the process. Um, but it, it continues on throughout the, the entirety of the piece. Um, and you have to know when to, when to stop when something's not working um, or when it's worked just well enough so you can move on to the next thing. I mean, are you talking about quitting there or like when to like quit a project or just within the process of? Yeah, I think both, okay. honestly. Like in, in regards to the project I was referencing, no, I'm not talking about quitting, but okay. in terms of uh, the lesson learned, mm-hmm. there is a, at, at a point in which you have, arrived where you've done enough work to determine the project is worth quitting. Yeah. Yeah. You might have to quit it. (laughs) Um, And uh, I get, so I like, I have a project that's been sitting in uh, on the hard drives for a decade at least. And um, it, I won't go, I'll spare the whole conversation of the, you know, the sob story around it, but like more or less, um, I haven't, uh, it's, it's all shot, but it needs to be edited. And I just haven't uh, gone back and done so for a myriad of reasons. Um, now I have to make the assessment then is this project, uh, worth going back to at this point, or is it, or is my time better spent working on new things? And I think a lot of people have that project. Most people probably don't have it, don't have it, uh, outstanding as long as a, t- a decade, but, right. but we all have something that we could go back to, but we're <laughs> wrestling with whether we should or move on to the, the next thing. And um, for that project specifically, uh, I think eventually I still am gonna go back to it because uh, it's not a question of whether or not um, I tried and fail to finish it, I just haven't, put in the time and energy to finish it if I'm bluntly honest with myself like I need to devote more focus to hey I'm 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 getting this done yeah um, and I just need to find some sort of working strategy to make that possible while still continuing to work on on, on new stuff mm-hmm. um and so with that specific project I think that one can continue to live on uh for another day but there are times where you know you're writing something and you're just like this just isn't a good idea or <laughs> this isn't, um, this isn't working out like I, I want to. So I, you know, I, I, 
if I'm generous and kind, maybe I'm saying that everything is always open to revisiting, you know, nothing ever really dies. They're all, everything's a zombie. Yeah. It's just a question of if you're going <laughs> to, if you're going to choose to go back and, and, and open up the locked door where the zombie, where you've put the zombie and let yeah. it out um, to use a horrible, but maybe timely uh, upcoming October analogy. Sure. Uh, but like, do you have projects that are zombie projects and how, um, have, you, how have you determined them as such? If you do? I do, I have like scripts that are, I definitely have scripts that I've been working with on some level for like, you know, five, six, seven years sometimes. Um, that like will call to me periodically and I'll revisit them and it just, whatever, just won't feel quite right to work on them then. I've been pretty good about just, if it's like some, if it's been shot already, I'll pretty much do it and just get it out the door. Uh, and I have some shorts like that, um, that I, like a few years ago or whatever that are like, they're not great, but I, I just wanted to like finish them and be done with them. Cause I, I wanted to avoid what you, what you're talking. I didn't want to add more zombies to the closet or <laughs> whatever. Yeah. Um, One zombie's fine. Like 10 exactly, zombies, yeah, exactly. you might have a problem. <laughs> um and i'm like trying to get better it's just like i feel like it's like reading books where if you read three chapters and the book isn't good it's like there's no need to finish the book and like just getting better at being okay with letting go and saying like no nah, this script isn't working it's i'm gonna put it away no i think that's uh that's right um and uh we have a, a special window into uh that mindset i think as as filmmakers um that many I hear about, you know, as an analogy, I hear friends watching endless hours of television. Like, I don't like this show. It's just like, no, nah, dude, put it away. Yeah. It's not getting good. It's not getting good. It might get better, sure. Um, <laughs> but you know, it's not It's not likely if you really hate it uh, after a certain amount of time. Um, so how do you given that you know failure is a reality of the of our process are, do you how do you stay motivated i mean you're a pretty prolific or at least you regularly working filmmaker you uh, seem to have you know projects that are constantly happening how do you stay motivated and overcome some of your uh self doubt or criticism or the rejection aspect that we started off talking about yeah, um, I, it's a good question. Um, I don't know. I, I had this thing where um, um, I, I read I read like the War of Art. I don't have you ever read this book? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I think I've it's been referenced and whatnot, but I've never read it. Okay, um, I read it in like I think twenty twenty fifteen or something, and I, I think like the the compelling force or whatever is like, I just like need to be writing things uh, for like my mental health or whatever. Um, I don't really know why that is, but um, uh, I think I've felt that way for a long time. And like, until I really read that book, I didn't like sort of, um, uh, I didn't sort of like live with that realization, I guess. Uh, and that's when I, and, you know, once I decided to start living with it, I, you know, I started writing like every day. Like, I wish, I, I don't know why I do, though, or, like, why I want to. Like, there's, like, mm -hmm. some creative urge or whatever, and it's probably, like, you know, who knows, some, like, uh, evolutionary um, whatever drive to, like, create things or, like, improve your mating chances or something, <laughs> something deep that, yeah. like, humans don't want to look at too closely because it's, you know, a little too raw or whatever. But um, I don't know. I think the way I stay motivated though is I, around that same time, I realized like, okay, I'm not, I, I was like, I'm not where I want to be as a writer. And like, I want to be able to write and like direct films that are, that are like good, that are worthwhile and be sustainable. But in order to get there, it's going to like basically take like 10 to 20 years. So I'm not going to like worry about the external factors too much. And like, I'm just going to keep working every day. And eventually I will like create something that is like worth 
you know, breaking out with or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, and that will like maybe, you know, lead to other opportunities or something. So I don't need to have a day job. Um, I, I think that's like the way I stay sort of like uh, where I avoid that sort of like paralysis that you can get where, you know, it's like, all right, if I write this thing, you know, is anyone going to make it? Am I going to be able to raise money for it? And then if I make it, will it even get into a festival? Will I get a distribution deal? Will I'm getting care? the anxiety back right now, just listening to it. Yeah, no. And, 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 and it's like, it, it is very paralyzing, but I think because I like kept going with it now that I made a micro budget feature that is not very commercial, let's be honest. Um, I now look at having gone through the whole process and being like, oh, I went through the whole process. Like I can do that process. And then maybe the next time be a little bit smarter about it. And like, if it is important for me to like, you know, uh, make my money back or whatever, like just do that process, but like do it sort of in the way that you do to, to, to make money, which is like, you know, hire a name actor or something like that. Um, so uh, yeah, I'm kind of rambling now, but I don't know if I answered your question. I mean, we're kind of talking about success on uh, the back end, you know, after everything is done um, and, and challenges on, on the back end um, in terms of uh, distribution and, and self-promotion and visibility and those sorts of things. But in terms of when you first start um, the filmmaking journey, um, maybe we should talk about some of those challenges. Um, yeah. Along the way, uh, there are many uh, to be named, but what are some of the, uh, I guess, steps uh, along the way that you find the most challenging? And, and, and what are some of your um, techniques, I guess, to overcome, uh, you know, adversity is the name of the game. <laughs> Uh, in filmmaking, because, you know, it's always going to be a situation where you are trying to strive for this, you know, getting this idea out of your head onto the, uh, you know, recorded or, or filmed or what, what have you. And everything under the sun is going to come uh, and, and, and try to prevent you from doing that. Obviously, the biggest one is oftentimes, you know, funding, but, you know, it can be everything from lunch hasn't arrived uh, on time to a camera yeah. breaking to having uh, difficulty with a cast or crew member to anything else under the sun. And obviously your own personal demons <laughs> can also play a huge role in that right. as well. Yeah. And so developing uh, confidence in, in your ability and um, is, is often a part of that as well. But maybe uh, pick up on any of those threads. Yeah, actually, yeah. So they kind of reminded me because I think the sort of like knee jerk answer to like, what's your biggest challenge as a filmmaker is almost always money. And uh, not that I've not had that as a challenge, obviously, but I think before, uh, I, I think like, especially when I was starting out, the biggest challenge was like, um, like how do I make something good? Like, just like, like challenge, like that, that's a challenge as like a writer of like, how do I write a script that uh, is good on screen and like, is a compelling story or, or whatever and is not boring and like you know has good dialogue and all that and i mean that that to me is like way, way harder than raising money it, it yeah. you know raising money is very uncomfortable a lot of times or whatever but but making but, something that is actually worth raising money uh, for yeah and, and if you look around the world yeah exactly if you look around the world it's like way more people are good at making money than are good at like creating really compelling uh scripts <laughs> like it's just much it's just much harder and i like i personally felt that with like my um i think what it was my first short film and then and I, I thought it was like really sort of uh, genius when i wrote it and, and made it and then and then you know i had to like sort of come to grips with the facts slowly like that it wasn't as good as i thought it was and mm. um I think that was like really, really hard. Um, how did you like, how did you define that uh, good? I guess how how did you make that determination? Um, 
Yeah, so I think it started like, it started with external factors, but then I sort of like, those became internal factors where like, it did not get the reception that I wanted with festivals, of course. And then, um, you know, people that watched it. Um, and I then sort of started to become more critical of it. And I mean, critical in a way of like, as a detached critic of like, you know, six months ago, I made this short, it didn't, you know, whatever, it didn't catch on in the way that I thought it would, like, why is that basically? And then I started looking at it and being like, okay, I think it's like kind of boring actually. And uh, like, there's interesting things about it, but it's not, um, it's not good enough to, to break through on sort of any, any level. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's like, that sort of drove me, I think then to like, the way I dealt with that was like, okay, well, next time, like I need to like focus on story more or, or you know, make the jokes funnier and things like that. Um, and, and, and to just not, like, I think there's like this filmmaker brain and it probably happens with like all kinds of artists where like, you wanna believe that your thing is really good just so like you can move on with it. And right. you don't want the note that's like, oh, it's not ready. And so you convince yourself that it is ready. And like, I've gotten better, I think, at like being like, I don't think it's ready yet, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, no, that's, it's, it's extremely important to uh, to have that internal mechanism that allows you to to um, you know critique your own your own where you're at right um, and I, sorry and when I when ahead. I was in um like I started in Chicago doing improv and sketch and like yeah. I always think about like sketch was like amazing because it was it was such a fun way to learn because you could like you write a sketch, it takes like maybe an hour, maybe three hours. And then like you put it on stage and then people either laugh or don't. And yeah, you have that instant feedback. Exactly. And like, I see so many things that I've made and that others have made, I think that where you're like, or, or well, well in sketch, like you'd make stuff and it would just be bad. And like, I was like, oh, I thought that would be, be good. And it wasn't. And you can't lie to yourself about it. You can't pretend that everyone laughed when they didn't. Um, so that did prepare me a little bit. I do think it is harder in film though, because sometimes like, you know, getting to that sort of prototype and like putting it up on stage, so to speak, like getting to a rough cut might cost you, you know, thousands or tens of thousands of dollars. So. Do you ever, um, like, do you incorporate, um, failure into your own creative practice and like, what, what does that look like? Um, as I, I know, for instance, um, when, I mean, that's kind of what rehearsals are, right? With a, right. like actors, it's giving you an opportunity to uh, fail, but fail in the most comfortable sense possible. One, when it's uh, safer, uh, you're not held by the constraints of time and money as much. Um, and hopefully it's giving people the opportunity to try things out that, mm. um, you know, uh, uh, that they might not try out were in a more highly pressurized situation, uh, namely on set. Um, right. But I think that can also apply to both writing and in and, and, and any other phase, really, um, the edit. You know, I, when I'm editing something, uh, you know, I, I almost have, I'm of the school of thought that you know, I might uh, approach a scene from, you know, 20 different directions. You know, if I'm working with an editor, I almost would like them to uh, bring me back a multitude of versions that I can then, uh, you know, we can discuss them. What are the yeah. merits of version one versus the merits of version six? and the weaknesses of those, because then that gives me the opportunity to then uh, pick and choose. Like, okay, there's one aspect of this one that worked. If we can combine it with the aspects of, of this other one that worked, we might really have something there. Mm -hmm. And so there is a certain amount of trial and error that I built into the editing process, but I think it would also apply to all of the other processes. Um, with writing, you're obviously doing drafts um, constantly. Um, and uh, in trying to make improvements that way. 
uh, in, 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 in the kind of uh, production stage, that it has its own iteration. So what do you think of any of that? Yeah, I think, um, I guess what I, th my mind jumped sort of to the writing and then the directing side of it. Um, I, I think with writing, it's like, um, I try, well, like with, just talk about like the feature I made most recently where uh, the sort of like process for, I guess like finding the failure was like getting, uh, was doing like table reads or like stage mm. reads with friends. Cause I feel like, um, like I feel like before you can sort of like deal with the failure, it's like you have to like find where the fit, like where it's failing or like, is it failing? And like, um, like I remember we, we did a table read maybe uh two months before before we went to production and um table reads are very controversial <laughs> i know and I, I know filmmakers have very strong opinions on some tell uh, me why you chose to do the table read and why you thought it would be a good idea yeah. then go into okay how it what happened during it and what you thought about it afterwards so, I mean, we did it for two reasons. One was like, it was a first crack at casting without casting director. And um, I had a friend uh, who was uh, working in theater and she brought in a bunch of like really great actors to do the table read. And we thought like, well, you know, we're at least we'll like get it read by like professional actors. So like, right. we'll learn more that way and maybe hopefully you know, some of them, one of them will be perfect for a role. And we did end up doing some casting out of that. Um, but then like on the content, la, I hate that word, on the like, whatever, <laughs> whatever level of like the substance of the script. We'll edit it out. <laughs> We're gonna bleep that out. Sorry, yeah, I, I'm a content producer, not a filmmaker. No, um, the, uh, I, I'm looking for like, where, where am I bored when I'm, when I'm hearing it read out loud and, and where do the actors get bored specifically? Right. Like, and where, like, where do they seem to like really be having fun with the character and when are they mm -hmm. like, um, so I, I think, and then the way we processed that was like, you know, I met with the, with the producers after that and we sort of put our brains together and said like, okay, like what's working, what's not working. And then mm -hmm. that, led me to rewrite and actually cut out like seven or eight pages of the script and like basically the issue there the failure point or whatever was that like the first act was like eight pages too long and, and it was just taking way too long to get into the the you know the best part of the story or whatever um well let me so, ask you yeah. oh, go ahead go ahead no no go ahead go ahead well, I was going to ask you, on what level did you pitch the the table read? Because I think a lot of the controversy that surrounds uh, the concept of table reads is how much are you asking from people at a table read? Mm -hmm. uh, and that's what allows you to assess things on a certain level. So, for instance, if you're saying it's more of a, if we put it on a spectrum from cold read to staged reading. Yeah. Where did you set things to allow you to then assess if something is working or not working? Did you come in, did you tell the actors to come in prepared with any sort of uh, way, shape or form about the script or did they, were, were they seeing it the first, for the first time and you were judging it off of that? Um, I didn't, I didn't put any sort of, I didn't really ask much of them, I think. Uh, they came over to my apartment um, and they were they had the script maybe four or five days in advance mm -hmm. uh, they certainly didn't have to memorize it um but if they you know if they wanted to read it over and i think most of them probably read it over in advance at least mm -hmm. um but i didn't really pressure them in any way to sort of like do that and and uh, but they were performing you would say yeah i think they were they were definitely performing and 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 i think it's like, even though it's sort of an informal table read, I think they all knew like, hey, if I do really good at this, like I might, you know, maybe I'll end up getting cast in this. I didn't frame it that way because I, I, I don't want it, you know, that, that's not what it was, or it right. was a little bit, but. <laughs> yeah. All right, so I guess, are you, are you asking about like the sort of like the, the sort of ethical line there of like asking people? No, to work? I mean, if you want to talk about that, but like what I was really trying to get at is if they weren't performing mm. or some people were performing and others, I know some actors don't like to do it and they 
were just like, I'm just going to literally read yeah. my line of dialogue without putting anything onto it other than C yeah. spot run. <laughs> and so then if you're left with something like that, uh, as a director, the challenge then, if you are using it uh, as a way of either casting or assessing the quality of it, mm -hmm. that could tremendously change. You know, if yeah. uh, Meryl Streep comes in and and reads C Spot Run, that could be completely different from if she puts her Meryl Streep on it. Right. And you're like, wow, that actually was really effective versus, oh man, I need to cut that. So right. basically I'm asking, um, to dig to dive into kind of the intricacies of how you drew that line for yourself mm -hmm. in, in assessing things yeah i think no that's a really good question that that like you hit on something really important which is like that sometimes actors will sometimes they'll phone it in intentionally because they yeah. either resent table reads or they're like i'm not prepared so i'm not even gonna uh pretend that i'm pre prepared um I knew that I knew that was like a risk and I, I don't think any of the actors like phoned it in. I, I don't also don't think any of them gave their best performance because they sure. weren't, you know, <laughs> whatever it's been. And, and um, so, so I guess I, I just try to remain aware of that and not, not jump to conclusions based on the table read and say like, Oh, this character is not working because you know, the, the way, you know, this actress read it or whatever. Um, and, and so I don't know how to get around that except for like knowing like, okay, I believe in that scene or I believe in that line. Yeah. Even though it didn't play well on the table read, like I think it still, still deserves to be in the movie or whatever. So right. I, I don't really draw big conclusions, but it's more of like broader strokes things. So like, yeah, then it seems that what is uh, at play during those situations is in the mind of who's ever assessing things, either you, the director or the producer or what have you, <clears throat> a decision maker of some sort, there is a certain amount of uh, self-confidence uh, in what it is you're doing weighed against the reality of what you're seeing. And right. so there is um, like to our earlier discussion about, you know, external forces being evaluating something versus internally what you're trying to get at i think uh it also applies in that situation um yeah i think i have like a i'm like hypersensitive to how people are reacting to something in a room mm -hmm. uh so like if i like if i invite somebody to a movie not even a movie i made just like whatever hollywood movie and i've feel like that they're bored like I will get anxious because like I invited them to this movie that that they're not sure. enjoying whatever and I think that's what I'm that's part of what I'm looking for on the table so be, just, be paranoid at all times <laughs> <laughs> and to be the most self-critical about everything every all the uh the, the breathing in the room where every time somebody <laughs> yeah. in always no, view it, that as a reflection upon your own character but, but but there's a thing, and you've probably felt this, where, like, you read your own script, and it all sounds good. But yeah. all of a sudden, just when other people are hearing it, you become, like, hyper in, attuned to... Uh, For sure. Whatever, every little soft spot in it, or every little thing that isn't quite the way. Um, Same with the edit, when you show it to somebody. Yeah, exactly. And, like, it's not that I, like... I do that and then I want to like throw it all away. It's just like knowing like, okay, that, that part, it's usually like with dialogue or something where it's just like, Oh, that line like just doesn't work or like, I really hate that joke or whatever. And then I, I can't see it though until I see somebody like perform it. And I think the table read is a much, you know, like we said, it's like easier to do it at a table read than film it and then find out. Yeah. No, that makes sense. Well, I mean, I think we've covered all the bases that uh, we, we set out to cover. Um, I you know, want to thank you for, for, for joining us and ha entering into this dialogue. Um, you know, we hope to continue doing these uh, talks with a, a wide variety of filmmakers in our community, because um, I really do think it, it's fascinating to just listen to other people's perspectives on things and hopefully glean, th glean from them what you will. And, 
uh, you know, learn from each other's both successes and, and failures and um, just keep making films. I think one of the key takeaways that I'm, uh, you know, inspired by from what we've talked about today is just like keep putting things out there in the world. And, um, you know, that's its own challenge. Um, but every step along the way uh, that you're uh, moving towards that um, is, it, is its own success, really. Um, and so I guess we, it, conversations like this allow us to take stock of that. And I think that's also important in uh, an important way that we stay motivated. We have to keep entering into these dialogues and uh, lifting one another up and, and uh, interrogating one another. <laughs> so um, <laughs> Absolutely. No, I've really enjoyed this, Robert. Yeah, no, I had a great time. Thank you so much uh, for having me. It's a, it was a pleasure. Thank you. Right on. All right. Thanks, everyone.